today it's all about shirts. Welcome to Ask Koki. This is going to be the first installment of a two-part series on shirts. Today is going to be a general overview. We're going to just sort of skim over things, speak about general things one should know about shirts. And in the next segment, we'll get into some more technical details about shirts. What are shirts? What are they used for? And what is the purpose? functionally and of course artistically. I like to think about dress as painting. For example, when I wake up in the morning or sort of when I get ready to get dressed, I lay my clothes out on a bedspread. I look at it as a canvas, my bed spread as a canvas. Now, coming a bit closer to the body, the shirt in my view is the canvas of the painting. It is a, the canvas upon which you layer on everything else. And so the important thing to bear in mind there is when you think about the painting, what are the primary colors of the background or the canvas of a painting? Usually white, of course, or some lighter color, because the light background allows all the other colors and all the elements of the painting to emerge and to stand on their own. And so it is with shirts as well. So shirts, generally speaking, are the canvas and hence, should be lighter, generally speaking, than every other clothing item on your body. Uh, there's a rule of thumb that says the closer to you go to your body, the lighter the garment should be. So since the shirt sits closest to your body, it thus makes sense that it should be the lightest garment on your body. Now, for those of you who've been on this channel for some time or who followed me on Instagram, I'm a big adherent of light blue and white shirts. They're just very simple and they go with almost everything. Now, unless you're a very sophisticated dresser and you have sort of a very wide repertoire in terms of your wardrobe, I think sticking to blues and whites and different variations of them, stripes and so on and so forth, are just fine. No need to go into violets and purples and all the other colors for the sake of versatility or to for the sake of breath. You could do just as well with 30 shirts, frankly, in a wardrobe that are different variations of white and blue, and they would work just fine. How do they enhance your appearance? Again, the shirt is the closest to your body. When it's light, what it does is that it frames your face, it frames this segment of your body. It just lifts everything up. And that again is a function, not just for all the purpose of the shirt, not just from an artistic standpoint, but from a functional standpoint, it frames your face along with the tie, of course, uh, the collar. Uh, we're going to get into that in the next segment. We're going to, we're not going to talk about technical aspects. We're just talking generalities today. So it frames your face and for, like I said earlier, a lighter shirt helps highlight all the other features of your dress and your face as well. Types of shirts and styles of shirt. Starting from the top, I am wearing a dress shirt, which is the most common type of shirt. Of course, most people own dress shirts. A dress shirt is a simple shirt with a collar, usually a pinpoint collar or spread collar or some kind of collar, detachable, tap collar, what have you. And the idea of the collar again is to help frame your face with the aid of a tie, of course, when one with a tie. So what I have on is a simple dress shirt, as you all perhaps own one. It's very simple, straight down the front. Cuffs often come with barrel cuffs or double cuffs. Some will call them French cuffs and just sort of plain in body. Uh, some prefer a pocket on their shirt. Some even prefer two pockets on their dress shirt. I have no pockets on my shirt because I just like clean lines. The next would be your casual shirts. And this goes, it runs the gamut. It goes anywhere from your polo shirts to your uh, cam collar shirts and uh, all sorts of shirts. There's so many uh, when you get into the casual element of it. But here at Ask Oki, we recommend three key casual shirts. Uh, so we carry four shirts because We've curated, we've looked at sort of all the shirts and determined that with these four types of shirts, one could get uh, quite far or get along just well. A dress shirt, of course, a casual shirt, one is sort of a cam collar shirt or what we call the Cooper collar shirt. Uh, it's a one piece collar shirt that is sawed off at the thigh. And it's something that you could wear with casual linen trousers or shorts to the beach, or even sort of dress up semi elegantly. The other would be a popover shirt, which is essentially a shirt with a collar and a placket that stops just about there. 
and you pop it over your head. So again, that is something very casual. It has a collar, so it can be slightly dressed up with a jacket, a casual jacket, or even a formal dressy jacket, uh, such as I have on. And the last would be a button-down collar. A button-down collar, which is very popular with the Ivy tradition, of course. Brooks Brothers comes to mind when you think of button-down collars. Just a simple, essentially a simple uh, pinpoint or dress shirt, pinpoint collar with a button at the end of it, which anchors onto the body of the shirt uh, with a little roll there. Again, pinpoint or sort of uh, button-down shirts are very common in the Oxford or sort of Ivy tradition, usually done in PK cotton. It can be done in any sort of fabric, of course, but uh, it's typically done in a very, very uh, rigid or sort of rough uh, PK cotton. So that's it for the four types of shirts I recommend. Now, there's so many. You could have your uh, Hawaii shirt. Uh, there's so many different the floral shirts, all sorts of things out there. Too many to mention. But if one were limited to four types of shirts, what we've done is curate four types of shirts that I think would get you a lot of mileage if you had to put together a capsule wardrobe. Now, the last type of shirt we're going to talk about are formal shirts. And what are formal shirts? These are the shirts you wear with your formal dress or your formal garments, okay? So we start with day formal, and then we move on to sort of nighttime or evening formal. So what is daytime formal wear? Daytime formal wear would be your morning dress, for instance, your morning suit, or your some would call a morning dress. Now, a shirt for a morning dress would be typically a, a regular dress shirt, such as I have on. Uh, there are those who wear their morning dress with a simple white shirt, and that is just fine. But the more traditional shirt for a morning dress is also a dress shirt, but it comes with a contrast collar. It comes with a white collar, and then the body of the shirt is done in some sort of a blue stripe, usually white and blue stripe, or plain blue. Again, the key thing there to note about daytime formal wear, especially for the morning dress, is that the shirt, one under it, looks like a dress shirt. It is a dress shirt. However, it is done with a contrast collar. A contrast collar meaning the collar is white and then the body of the shirt is going to be either a sky blue or sort of a sky blue with very faint bengal stripes or pencil stripes. So that's it for the formal, formal shirts for day wear. Now, night wear or evening wear, is, it gets really, really interesting and where you can get truly expressive. Evenings are meant to be elegant, of course. You wear your tuxedo, your dinner jackets, your velvet jackets, just all sorts of flamboyant, uh, however, classic outfits. And it then makes sense that the shirts to be paired with them ought to be also quite expressive. So we'll start with your basic formal uh, shirt for your tuxedo, which would be a typical white shirt with a collar for your tuxedo or a wing collar. And the difference between it and a typical is that it has a Marcella front. Now, what is a Marcella front? A Marcella front is a bib that is cut right here. It's a square bib that is cut right here on the face of the shirt. Sometimes it's done with jacquard, cotton jacquard. Sometimes it's done with some, some kind of a floral uh, cotton pattern. Uh, depends again on how exuberant you want to get with your shirts. But uh, the more tasteful ones are done with just a plain uh, uh, jacquard in front of it. It's called a Marcella, Marcella front. It's just, again, just a square right here. Now, on top of that square uh, is where you put your studs, your evening studs, usually in black or sort of off-white mother of pearl. And the reason why you have that Marcella front is, again, is another form of expression for your evening wear. And if you notice, when you wear your evening waistcoats, uh, they're cut very low in front. And the idea behind cutting your evening waistcoat very low in front is to show off the Marcella front and, of course, the studs. Because you have a bow tie on, of course, your bow tie doesn't get in the way of either the studs or the Marcella front. So that's your evening formal or sort of the most common evening formal shirt. Now, of course, you could go to white tie shirts, which would mean, which call for a wing collar. 
or bat collar, some would call it. Those used to be very, very popular, but now not so much. Uh, I haven't seen anyone wear an evening tail suit in quite a while myself. So I, I wouldn't place that on top of my list unless you are just sort of uh, a true uh, uh, dyed in the wool sartorial uh, uh, master, so to speak. But just for your evening wear, a simple white shirt with a Marcella front, a typical collar, it could be a wing collar or not, but just a typical collar that can hold a bow tie. Again, the key thing there is to bear in mind is that you should have a point collar, not a spread collar. Because you wear a bow tie, of course you wear a bow tie with your evening wear. And so you should have a point collar such that the bow tie fits properly into it and doesn't essentially get in a conflict with the collar of the shirt, uh, which would be the case if you wore a white cutaway collar. So those are the types of shirts. Now let's talk about fabrics. Again, we're going to keep this very, very high level. Uh, we could really sort of go to town on fabrics here, but I'm going to keep it very simple. There are two key fabrics for shirtings. One is cotton and linen for the most part. Now you could get into any number of other things and people get really, in, you know, really, and you can really sort of blow your imagination in terms of all types of fabrics. But in terms of day-to-day -day dress shirts or even even uh, fancy dress shirts, the, the two primary materials or fabrics that I see used are cotton and linen. Now, talking about cotton, so you're talking about primarily either poplin or voile. So for your typical dress shirt, such as the one I have on, this is a voile. This is a cotton voile. It's a very, very fine cotton voile by Carlo Riva. But the more common shirt fabric or cotton fabric used in shirtings for everyday use will be poplin. It's a very durable, hard-wearing cotton that you can basically wear day in, day out, throw it in the wash, bring it out, and it just sort of holds up. And then uh, other types of cotton, of course, include sort of pinpoint cotton, which is used in button-down shirts. Uh, it sort of, it has sort of a rough surface to it, or some would call it an Oxford cotton. And then there are any number of other, a lot of variations of cottons out there. And then blends, of course. Then the next would be linen. Linen would be something you would use for more casual shirts or for summer shirts, especially in the summer uh, when it gets really hot and uh, humid. Now, in the summer, I wear linen shirts, even with my jackets and suits, because, of course, linen has wicking properties that wool or cotton doesn't have. Linen absorbs, absorbs moisture very quickly. So in the summer, for instance, where it's almost impossible to wear a jacket, you would be surprised that if you wore a linen shirt, you could actually wear a jacket and still be comfortable because the linen sits close to your body. It wicks up the heat very quickly and doesn't allow your body to really generate or develop any kind of heat. Linen is very, very good for the summer or for the humid, or if you live in a perennially humid or warm climate, say in the tropics. So those are really the two types of materials that I would say 80, 90% of shirts are made from, cotton and linen. And then within sort of cotton, you have voile, you have, uh, you have poplin, uh, you have blends, uh, you have Oxford PK, and then, you know, they go into all sorts of patterns. You can have it done in herring bones or sort of a self herring bone and what have you. But we're not gonna get into all that. The, Two key things to bear in mind when you're shopping for shirts, at least for a basic wardrobe, they should be either pure cotton, natural cotton, not synthetic. It should be some form of natural cotton or linen, meaning again, very natural linen, nothing synthetic, all organic. Uh, these are the two types of fabrics that would, one, first of all, preserve the longevity of the, of the shirt. And also, this is something you wear very close to your body. So you want to be very, very uh, uh, careful. Of, of course, you want to be very mindful about uh, the fabric uh, it's made out of so uh, you don't start to uh, develop all the is issues with your skin. What is available in the market? Now, this is really a Pandora's box, and we could really get into it here. What's available in the market, where to buy, the prices, you know, handmade versus ready to wear. So let's start from the top. Shirts are one area where there is just an 
absolute explosion of, I mean, the, the options are just limitless. They're just absolutely new, limitless. All one needs to do is uh, type in uh, Google search shirts and it's just, um, but let's break them down into three uh, segments, so to speak. You have your bespoke shirts, you have what you call made to measure or made to order, and then you have ready to wear. Now, let's skip past bespoke and made to measure and let's start with ready to wear. Again, literally every brand out there makes a shirt, every clothing brand. But in terms of companies with a shirting heritage, there are two that come to mind, Trumbull and Asser and Chave Pari. Now, these are, Chave Pari is of course sort of on the higher end. Trumbull and Asser, I would say sort of, it's on the medium end, not too expensive and certainly not too cheap. And then you have sort of the Italian brands, you know, the Ketons, the Borellis, um, and so on and so forth. There's so many, so many, so many, too many to name. But in terms of the traditional names, the, when, it, when it comes to shirts, when you think about shirt, what do you think about? You think about Chade, you think about Tumbula Nasa, you think of Brooks Brothers, you know, sort of on the more day-to-day, -day, the more utili utilitarian skill. Um, those are the three that come to mind. So if you were to place them on a spectrum, you would say Chade on top, Trumbull and Asser, and then Brooks Brothers. And then you have sort of a, an array of other shirt makers below there, let's say below the $100 mark. Now, to place that in context, pricing, a Chave shirt, I would imagine, if you went to sort of their main uh, atelier on Place Vendôme, which I've, I've been there quite a few times, if you were buying off the rack at, at Chave in Place Vendôme, I would imagine that the shirt, a ready-to-wear shirt there would cost you anywhere close to 500 euros. I think that would be a fair estimate, between 350 and 500 euros, easily. You come down to Tumblr and Asser, which I would say sort of, it's not quite Chave, but it's up there. Uh, you're looking at maybe 250, 300 pounds sterling, right? Or sort of the equivalent of it in euros, about 250, 300 euros thereabout or pounds sterling. And then on the lower end, you've got your Brooks Brothers, right, which are about $100 or a little bit more for their shirts. Again, these are mostly day-to-day -day walk horse shirts for on the Brooks Brothers level. And then as you go further up, these are more sort of very finer, you know, shirts made of finer cottons and finer fabrics. And of course, the construction and the handwork uh, is going to be very, you know, it's going to vary as, of course, it's going to improve or be uh, more handwork involved as you go higher, if that's a mark of quality. So to me, those are sort of the three strata. You can pick any of those three strata and there's going to be a thousand names you can fill into those box, literally a thousand names. So if you're shopping for shirts ready to wear, you have to do your own research for a little bit. I haven't worn a ready-to-wear shirt, frankly, in over 15 years, 20, almost 20 years. So uh, I couldn't tell you what the state of the market is, the state of the ready-to-wear market is. Uh, but when I did wear ready-to-wear, uh, these were the names that came to mind whenever I thought about buying shirts off the rack. Now, let's talk about made-to-measure. This is really where it gets really interesting. And I say interesting because in the last 10 years or so, 5 to 10 years, there has been a proliferation of brands, shirting brands. Uh, they start all the way from the top 100 hands, which I believe is based in the Netherlands. It's a small boutique. They make beautiful shirts, excellent shirts, really, and with a price to match as well. Uh, you have Emma Willis uh, on German Street. Uh, she's also an excellent, you know, uh, a shirt maker par excellence. Uh, so if you're looking at the top end of made to measure, or bespoke, right? So these days, bespoke and made to measure are used inter interchangeably, especially for shirts. It's very, very difficult to see the difference between a bespoke shirt and a made to measure shirt, but we'll get to that in the next segment. So on the top end is gonna be your Emma Willis, uh, your 100 hands, and a number of other really, really fine shirt makers. In the middle, you're gonna have sort of your proper cloth. Uh, proper cloth is, uh, is a company, I think they're based in New York, and there is, any other number of there's so many, so many, I can't even think about, uh, uh, you know, uh, I can't really give you specific names, but there's so many, there's, uh, there's uh, Pini Parma, uh, literally every town in Italy has a hundred made to measure uh, shirt shop, 
because that's really all they wear. Uh, so do your own research and you can find any number of uh, medium, I would say medium level, uh, Luca Vitable, which is Italian, and so on and so forth. I would say medium. Now, in terms of pricing, you know, your Emma Willis's and the 100 hands of the world, obviously, okay, and you're looking at closer to 500 euro or dollars or the equivalent of it, whichever currency you use. So these are really very fine handmade shirts and uh, with a price to match. Uh, the middle uh, where you're looking at sort of your proper cloths and so on and so forth. There, if I'm correct, the pricing is going to be in the $200, $250 range or thereabout. And then under $100, there's absolutely, there's absolutely a menagerie of options. A lot of it made, you know, anywhere. I don't want to say it made in China, but obviously China pumps out a lot of volume at a very low cost. So there's so many Chinese shirt makers out there uh, that will offer you an MTM shirt under $100. Now, I can't vouch for the quality, of course, because I've never tried any of them. But if you don't care so much about quality, if you look at shirts as just a utility item, then why not? There are those who just look at shirts as a utility item. Uh, it's sort of, it's, it's the first layer. It's quote unquote hidden uh, under your coat. And so they try to economize on shirts and put the money elsewhere, say in their tailored garments. Uh, it's not the case for everyone. I particularly like shirts. I like the feel of a very fine shirt. It just makes you feel good and it just makes the outfit feel more complete. Uh, so that's it for the made to measure and bespoke range. There's thousands of names, again, exhaustive. Uh, you do your own research and you'll come up with any number of names. Askoki, of course, being one of those names, we make our own bespoke shirts, such as what I'm wearing. I'm wearing a bespoke shirt by Askoki. This is made by our premium or made with our premium cotton from Carlo Riva. Of course, we make our bespoke shirts with other types of fabrics. Uh, that are not at the level. They're still very, very fine fabrics, very, very fine fabrics from Italy, uh, from England. Uh, however, what I have on is a Calo River shirt. And if I could think of two names when it comes to shirtings, right? You have uh, Calo River, which is Italian, and then you have uh, Alumo or Switzerland. You have Thomas Mason, of course, in terms of fabrics. Again, I'm not talking the actual shirts. If you're looking to source the fabric and make your own shirt. So we've talked about the brands. We've talked about sort of ready to wear, bespoke and made to measure. Let's talk about the fabric and sourcing. There are two segments or there are three segments in this market. There's the really upper end. So you're talking the Rolls Royce of cloths. You're talking Carlo Riva and Alumo of Switzerland. And then in the middle, you're looking at Thomas Mason, which is very, very popular widely used uh, from what I understand. I've never used them, but they're very good. In Italy, you have brands like Canclini, right? You know, Canclini, they make cotton uh, shirtings, uh, but they're especially uh, specialized in linen. So most of my linen shirts actually I get from Canclini or Solbiati. Solbiati also makes uh, linen shirtings. So in terms of linen, uh, Italian linen, which are really good for shirts, I would say Sobiati or Canclini. But when you're looking at cotton or blends of cotton, the top of the line, top of the line, top of the line, you cannot do any better than Calo Riva or Alumo of Switzerland. In terms of buying a shirt, what to keep in mind when buying a shirt, whether it's ready to wear or bespoke. Now, I stand before you, and if you look at me, what are the first things you observe? The collar, of course, the cuffs, you don't really see the body of the shirt. So you don't really see how the shirt fits, right? It's not visual. Wearing the shirt, I can feel how the shirt fits. But to the onlooker, so we're going to look at it from two aspects. One is the visual presentation of the shirt. And then we're going to talk about fit. So let's look at visual first. So the first thing you notice is the collar of the shirt and the cuff of the shirt. So those have to be spot on. They have to work with your face type. Again, remember the purpose of the shirt is to frame your face. So the color has to be congruent with you, the shape of your face. In other words, if you have a wide face, you don't want to wear a wide cutaway color. You want to wear sort of a slimmer color to give you balance, to balance out your face. If you have a thin face, you want to wear a wider color 
right, to begin to balance out your face. So the shape of the collar is really critical when it comes to the visual presentation of the shirts. The cuff, of course, is important, right? So for dress shirts or sort of dressy outfits, I prefer to go with double cuffs or French cuffs. Everything else is just, I wear what you would call barrel cuffs or normal cuffs. Let's talk about fit. The key thing again here in fit of a shirt, one, the collar, two, the armhole, and then, of course, the fit across the torso. To me, these are the key important things and the length of the cuff, the length of the sleeves, of course. So let's start again from the top. The collar, the length of the sleeve, the fit of the, uh, the, fit of the shirt across the torso and the armhole. The collar, of course, that is obvious. You don't want any gaps here in your collar. If you stick a finger here, you don't want to be able to stick one on a finger here. Otherwise, the shirt is too big in the collar. The sleeves. When you bend your arm that way, it should cover your wrist bone. Okay, it should be long enough to cover, to just about cover your wrist bone when you bend your arm. That tells you you have the proper length. The body or the torso, it should be comfortable. And so it should look fitted. Well, not skin tight, but it should follow the lines of your body. But there should be sufficient room such that you can actually tug at the shirt and have a lot of room there. And the reason is this, for most of you working men, you sit at a desk all day long, okay? And when you sit down at the desk, your shirt, your torso tends to sort of expand a little bit and it pulls at your shirt. And you know, there's this ghastly, I'm sure any number of us have seen this with men walking around or sitting in the office and their buttons are popping. I mean, the worst are those who tailor them so tight that even when they're standing, uh, the, the buttons are screaming, screaming. You don't want that. Uh, that just looks very tawdry. What you want is a shirt that is cut, that follows the lines of your body, but with sufficient room such that you can actually tug at it on the torso. Uh, and the reason is when you sit down or when you make gestures, you don't want the buttons. Essentially, uh, you don't want the risk of the buttons popping and, uh, uh, <laughs> Some would even say blinding an onlooker in the eye. So that's two, the torso. The third thing is the armhole. Now, very similar to your coat armhole, the armhole of the shirt needs to be very high. And that is a key difference between ready to wear and bespoke, even made to measure and bespoke. With made to measure, it's very seldom. Sometimes they get the armhole right, but very often, uh, or made to measure or made to order. Uh, they just cut them on a standard pattern. So you have these low hanging armholes that just look terrible and basically are non-functional because you can't move in those things. Uh, they restrict your motion or they restrict, restrict your range of motion and you can't move. So similar to a jacket, just like I have on, you can see how freely I can move around because my armholes have been cut very high. Similarly, you want a shirt that's been cut with a very high armhole because it increases your range of motion significantly, improves or increases your range of motion. That is one. Also, from an aesthetic standpoint, if you look at my shirt and my jacket, you can see about a quarter inch of my cup peeking from under, under my jacket. And the reason that is, is because the shirt has been cut with a deep armhole. The jacket obviously has a deep armhole. If the shirt has been cut with a low armhole, what happens is that it's going to be pulled up into the jacket always. Even if it's the proper length, even if the shirt is the proper length, you're not going to see this a quarter inch or sort of piece of linen because the armholes are so low that they're going to be dragged into the jacket and that's just not a, very, that's not a good look at all, which should be avoided. So if you have the choice of bespoke or perhaps even made to measure, ensuring that the armhole is cut very high is very useful, not just from an aesthetic standpoint, but also from a functional uh, standpoint, as I just demonstrated. So we've talked about the collar, we've talked about the girth, we've talked about the length of the sleeve, we've talked about the armhole. And those are the four key things, you know, everything else is really off for grabs. Uh, the length of the shirt, uh, whether it's sort of a squared off or sort of, or whether it's uh, 
we sort of um, round it off or whether it has a placket on the side. You know, these are all just sort of aesthetic uh, details that really don't, don't that are highly uh, personal or individual. But those are the four things one needs to keep in mind, uh, whether you're buying uh, a, a shirt from the store or you're having one made either ready to wear or bespoke. One more thing as well to keep in mind, and this we'll talk about this in the next segment when we talk to come to construction, would be the uh, color or the construction of the color. It is very, very key because the construction will determine how well the color sits when you wear it. So that's it. I think we're done uh, for the introduction. Uh, actually, it, it, uh, I got into it uh, a lot more than I, I was hoping to. I was hoping to keep it really very high level uh, so we could really dig into it in the next segment. But uh, as with all things uh, classic dress, once you get going, it's really hard to hold back the train. So there you have it. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it's been, uh, for me, another exciting segment. Uh, do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, which you're watching. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, go to our Instagram page. Be sure to follow us. Uh, our Discord community growing every day, a community of like-minded uh, individuals where we share ideas uh, about classic dress and all the other things that make life very, very interesting. So again, like, follow, subscribe, and do everything else, including comments uh, on our Instagram. Uh, you know, I love to read from you. I love your comments. I always respond to every single comment or your DM. So please do not be shy. Uh, we want to interact with you. We want you to interact with one another and we want to kind of keep building this, uh, this, uh, these communities and collectively community uh, that we have built at Askoki. So I say once again, thank you for joining us. Uh, don't forget to go to our website, critical, the most important. Our shop is on there. Our products are all there on the website. You will find the shirts there as well, such as the one I have on. Bespoke, completely bespoke, made for you. You have a choice of fabrics, of course, uh, that uh, you can choose from, uh, whether it's Color Reva or other vendors that we work with. There's a variety depending on your budget or your price range. There are a number of uh, other vendors that we use. So, so uh, since we're on the subject of shirts, please do not forget to go to the website. Click on the shop, www.askoki.com. Click on shop, go to shirts, and have at it. So that's it from the prof. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye and see you on the next segment.